Imagine loving your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, your master certified coach and midlife mentor. And I am so glad to be here with you again for this week's episode, where we are taking a bit of a different spin on New Year's resolutions. Today's topic is about how to make your 2020 New Year's resolution the best one ever, especially in midlife. Now, did you roll your eyes already? I think I saw you do that. I think I did. (laughs) I know, I know. Even thinking about New Year's resolutions can throw you for a loop and bring up all kinds of negative thoughts and feelings. Things like this. What's the point? They never work. It's too hard. I don't want to bother. I'll just fall off the wagon. I'll just fail after a couple of weeks. Sound familiar? This sort of thing is common. And when you think these kinds of thoughts, you typically feel unmotivated, defeated, maybe even hopeless. That's nice, right? Fun times. (laughs) So I want to talk to you about a different way to approach all of this. And the reason I want to go in a slightly different direction is because of a reaction that I had recently when I heard someone talking about all of this. I had the pleasure of talking to someone who had just reached a goal. And when I say pleasure, I mean pleasure. I was so happy for her. She was so happy for herself, too. I was um, just really taken by the way she was sharing all of this. It was an income goal, and she'd been working on it for quite some time. Her face was full of pride. She was joyful. I would say giddy, actually giddy with excitement. And I loved that she noticed how much pride she felt. I loved that she took the time to share her accomplishment. And then she said something that really stood out for me. She said, that her future self has been guiding her and she's reaping the rewards now from her hard work and listening to the guidance and insight from her future self. And she also said that her new future self, which is her future self from where she's at now, is still there cheering her on. So do you follow this? Her future self was guiding her for the last few years or so and now she's reached her goal. So now her future future self... (laughs) is there again, or more accurately, is still there. She's always there, just like your future self. Your future self is there for you. Now, I loved that she felt so connected with this future version of herself who clearly had her own back. And really, when you think about it, who better than your future self to look out for you? The way she described all of this, though, really made an impact on me. I had never thought about the future self concept personally until I discovered coaching about six and a half years ago. And even then, as I slowly discovered my future self, I still imagined her as part of the paper I was writing on, right? Like she was related to the exercise I was doing, the one I was thinking about. That's when I was thinking about her. She didn't have a life of her own, so to speak. She wasn't that permanent in my mind. She wasn't really anthropomorphized the way my friend's future self was. So what I mean is, my friend thinks of her future self as more real, almost human, and a part of her life than simply on a worksheet once a year, like my future self was, right? Different now. (laughs) Anyway, that's why I wanted to suggest an amazing New Year's resolution to you right now for 2020. And here it is. Do something as a New Year's resolution that your future self will thank you for. It's a different spin on the whole New Year's resolution thing, right? It's subtle, but really think about it. I think this perspective conjures up very different feelings that are way more useful. So compare these two thoughts to see what I mean. One, a traditional New Year's resolution would go something like this. I want to exercise four times per week. Now, have you thought that? Have you thought something about the way you want to exercise? Now compare it to this. This one is with your future self at the forefront of your mind. It it will go like this. 
My future self will thank me when I'm 10 years older for moving my body now. So you see what I mean? We're comparing I want to exercise four times per week with my future self will thank me when I'm 10 years older for moving my body now. See what I mean? When you think the way you might usually think about a New Year's resolution, it's often about having to do something more or having to start something, or having to do something different, even having to do something hard. You might think of it as noble, or worthy, or healthy. And for sure, it looks good on paper. And it also looks good because it's like you're saying, I want. That's the way you're thinking about it. But the way it really ends up, I don't know, kind of sounding to you is like a big, fat should when you think it. I should be exercising four times a week, that sort of thing. And when you think about something that you should do, notice how you feel. Do you get all excited and motivated? (laughs) I think not. Or do you feel more resistance? For most of us, it's more resistance. There's something very negative about all of it, the way we typically um, deal with this kind of thinking. Now take a look at how you feel when you invite your future self into play. My future self will thank me for whatever it is for you in 10 years or whatever the time frame is for you. So I'm just going to play with 10 years for a second. So you might even want to be more specific about how old you'll be then. So I'm 56 now. I could think my future 66-year-old self will thank me for moving my body more now. When I think this, I don't feel resistance at all. I feel compassionate. I feel motivated. I actually feel gratitude. My future self totally has my back. And your future self has your back too. Perhaps more than anyone else in the world. She knows you better than anyone else. The trick is to key into her, to invite her in, to welcome her, to embrace her wisdom, to really get acquainted with her guidance. So be honest. Are you rolling your eyes again? (laughs) I can totally see you rolling your eyes. I can. So I get it. It sounds like a little too much woo. It could. I I get it. But I'm resistant to too much woo. So this really gave me insight as to how to move forward with important intentional things that I want more of in my life. Like I really am resistant if it sounds a little bit too weird, too crunchy. I don't know. Like I'm open to it. But if it's over the line... (laughs) I might be found rolling my eyes too. But I'm telling you, when I heard my friend describing this, it was so different than the way I think about my future self. And I just knew I really, really wanted to share it with you. Now, I have a sneaky suspicion that it made such an impact on me, and I know I'm not alone in this stuff. So I think it'll make a big impact for you too, and it will work. One of the most important reasons to think about your future self is because in midlife, it's so much easier to have unsupervised thoughts about time. And I've talked to you about this a few times in other episodes. What I mean is, you may not even know what you're thinking about when you think these thoughts, but this I'm running out of time business, this focus on being too old, that sort of thing, it is so pervasive. And it really does affect you. So when you decide to think about your future self, you're actually tackling that way of thinking head on, very directly. You're challenging your belief. You're propelling your mind into the future and imagining life at a different level. You're playing with the idea of who you want to be in 10 years, for example. You're asking yourself to imagine what it will feel like to be that person who accomplished that thing in 10 years. You're actually regret-proofing because you're dealing with something directly that you really, really want to change. You're doing all of this instead of indulging in all of the running out of time crap, and it is so different and so opposite. It really is. You're propelling yourself forward in a kind and compassionate way rather than feeling too old and sometimes even panicky about what you no longer have time to do. It is a much better plan, a much better strategy, and a much better way to regret-proof your life. 
Okay, so getting back to our main focus today, how to make your 2020 New Year's resolution the best one ever, especially in midlife. So there are three easy steps. The first one is to think about what you really, really want and will likely regret one year from now. Let's just focus on one year. You can pick whatever time frame you want, but for the three steps, I'm just gonna use one year because it's very easy to get your head around. Okay, so how do you do this? What I want you to do is think through these three areas of your life, and these three areas coincide with the framework that I use in all of my coaching. So first, we're gonna look at self-care. So when I talk about self-care, I'm referring to it probably a little more broadly than you might typically think about it. So think about weight, think about exercise, think about skincare, mindfulness, morning routines, travel, hobbies, passion projects, all of that. Really just think through what is going on in your life in those areas. The next area is relationships. Now, when I talk about relationships, I'm referring to your inner circle of family and your closest friends. I'm also thinking about your friends and your acquaintances, that level of people in your life. And then finally, also your community. However you define community, it could be associations, it could be um, like uh, people that you dance with regularly or play games with. It could also be actually in your neighborhood physically. It could be alumni associations. It could be um, any anything, any group of people or ways that you think about plugging into your community. And then the third way is to think about the way you make a formal contribution in life, like your professional or your profession or your volunteer contribution. So really think about those three things and think through these areas and what's under control and what's not under control, okay? So think about what's going well and what's not going so well. Where are the holes of your satisfaction and fulfillment? So just spend a few minutes thinking about that. And then the second step is to ask yourself this, with all of these amazing parts of your life, what would your future self a year from now actually thank you for focusing on and committing to? Now, my biggest tip here is to resist thinking about this part too much. So ask yourself, what would your future self a year from now actually thank you for? Okay? Really think about it, but not too much. Notice that thought that comes in right away. It might be an image. It might be an image that comes through. It's your future self suggesting something to you. She knows. Now, you might feel resistance, and that's why I don't want you to really dissect this part too much. You might just see a glimpse of what it is, and that's fine. But if you really start to dissect it, you're probably going to have some resistance. But just let that idea, that glimpse, that image, that direction come through. She's guiding you at this point. She's offering you some clarity. Okay, the third step is to explore that resistance. Expect yourself to be a little uncomfortable. I mean, after all, you've been avoiding this level of commitment and focus on this thing for decades. Maybe decades, right? For sure, a long time. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with you. But just because you sense a little discomfort doesn't mean that you need to bail. Remember, this is it. This is the thing that your future self will thank you for. She totally has your back. She knows that you can do it. She believes in you, but it all starts with awareness of the way that you're actually thinking about your life and then your ability to be intentional about your life. That's how we roll, my friend. That's why you're listening to this podcast. (laughs) These three steps will help you focus on making 2020 a year to remember and a year to be proud of. This is what it means to do your midlife on purpose. That's it for this episode. My focus as a midlife coach is to help you waste less time spinning around and get excited about your life again. Being the queen of your brain domain is the best way to be. Check out the show notes with more information and links at susierosenstein.com. Download my free ebook, Nine Secrets to Get Unstuck in Your 50s at www.susierosenstein.com forward slash nine secrets. Now there are three ways to connect more with me in the future. The first way is to join the free Women in the Middle Community Facebook group, 
where we continue the podcast conversation. Head over to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash women in the middle community. The second way is to work with me directly and get unbelievably effective coaching to take you from being stuck and confused to being crystal clear and excited about your future. Grab your kickstart call at www.talktosuzy.com. We will see if we're a good fit. And the third way is to join my new midlife membership, Finally First. This is an upbeat virtual community for 50 plus women who want clarity and courage and connection to make the changes they want to make in their next chapter. So sign up for the VIP waitlist now because the doors will open again soon and you will be ready to go. Head over to www.iamfinallyfirst.com. Let's do this, ladies. It's time for you to put yourself first. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.